Solicitor Freund. Yes, and Mark Hartney and Sarah Ortiz are here on behalf of the Department of Community and Economic Development. All right, thank you, Mark. Uh, approval of minutes. Everybody have a chance to review the minutes of last meeting? I would make that motion. Thank you, Charles. Anybody second that, please? I'll second. Thank you, Lori. Any questions on that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mark. It's 819. We have to wait for the. He was running wait downstairs. For the we have to repeat all that? And now we are. Um, so maybe. So that was practice? <laughs> well, I, I would just say for the record, you know, we didn't realize the starting, the recording had started and we just approved the minutes and took right. the roll call. Thank you, Mark. Well said. Didn't realize the recording wasn't starting yet. Sorry. We had roll call and all, we also approved the meeting minutes. Um, Everybody's caught up to speed. Uh, public comment. Uh, seeing no public comment, we'll move on to the uh, KIZ presentation by Astor Chavon. So they're working on the laptop. Did you want to do the treasurer's report? Or it, we yeah. have the slides handed out if you want to follow along in that. Or in your packet. Slides. I mean, I think he updated a couple, so it's up to you guys. Well, he's. We can uh, do treasurer's report and so on. You want to do that? See how these gentlemen get set up. Okay. I get the full feeling of the. Yeah. See, that was a dress yeah. rehearsal yeah. for yeah, I him see. too. I don't want to, looking for the wow factor. Yeah, I don't want. To, I don't want to be short changed here. I traveled all the way to this meeting this morning. I want to. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to the treasurer's report. Morning. Uh, you have the, the April 30th treasury report in front of you. Before I just kind of review it, I, I do want to really take time to thank uh, particularly Mark and, and Sarah for the work in, in working with Duran and his team, actually. I, I think this report reflects uh, a good balance sheet and an income statement on what we could understand and read on a monthly basis. and then. Later on, too, we'll talk about a budget that we uh, are going to ask for for approval, and, and that is actually implemented into this report, too. So really, the team did a lot of work. We had a couple meetings, but, but I'm, I'm really happy with how this has come out. I think it really formats well, and it's easy to understand, and, and it will do proper accounting for us on a monthly basis. So I, I just want to thank the efforts, particularly by Mark and Sarah and Duran and his team, and, and Steve as well, actually. Everybody helped out to make this happen. So you see that the first report shows uh, a balance sheet, and at the end of uh, April 30th, our, our cash and cash equivalent assets are about a million four and change receivables, and it shows a total uh, fund balance of one million two hundred eighty thousand fifty-one point two five. Uh, liabilities are just our notes payable to three hundred fifty thousand. So then, if you go back to the bottom box there, you'll see total assets of a million eight and change. Total liabilities at 350,000, and then the difference, which is our fund balance, uh, and we also then show the year-to-date net gain or loss, which at this point, which we'll talk about in a second, is uh, on the income statement at 264,645 dollars and 58 cents. So it reads really well, and this will map out on a monthly basis for us as well. Mm -hmm. Then, if you turn to the next page, which is 5.1, this is really our income statement and what's nice about this too is if you go to the third column you'll see the actual year to date for April uh, but to the left of that is the budget then we'll show the original budget and we show some uh, remaining and percentage use so it's a nice format that on a monthly basis we'll be able to compare how the income statement is going towards our annual budget but you'll see from top to bottom the revenues uh, year to date we showed uh, total revenues of 287,114.76 then we go down to the expenditure column under that blue line and you'll see that filters all the way through to year to date we have total expenditures on the second page here at 22,469.18 and uh, that gives us a year to date revenue of 264,645.58 so the nice thing too is too is you see the expenditures as, as the budget rolls out there to the left you know we'll break out in more detail the accounting so, you know legal service auditing services whatever 
fees are broken out, we'll have a little more detail as well, right. which is really nice. Uh, and then the last page is just kind of budget to actual for the capital project. So we have that broken out separate like we always did too, and you'll see our capital actual year-to-date revenue is 145507.35, and uh, total expenditures, uh, if we come down there, is the 145507.35. So it kind of reads well, and, and uh, I don't know, I'll, at this point, I'll just open up to any questions. Just one point of clarification on the income statement. <clears throat> the budget that's in there, that's draft right now. Um, we'll approve a, an official budget later on, but in order to get this report to read right today, we had to put some numbers in there. Rod, thanks for working on that. Um, you broke the stand even I can understand it, so thank you. It's very easy to read. I thank you and the county for working on it. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. Thanks. Uh, any questions on, on this? You know, and Mark just said the, the budget numbers right now are just plugged in for reference. I have a question um, under sure. um, on the special legal services. Is that to your organization or is that a payment to someone else? Which one are you referring to? It's on the to? last yeah. page Capital on the budget to actual under six. occupancy costs. It says special legal services six 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 fifty. So, so that would be um, just that would be payments to uh, solicitor for rent. Okay, thank so you. So that's King Spry. That's not an old payment to anybody no. else. No. That's their actual billing. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Any other questions on that? Motion to approve. Thank you, Lori. Second? Second. Thank you, Ken. Any questions on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, thank you. <clears throat> all right, invoices for payment. In your packet are uh, the invoices for payment. Um, Within there, uh, King Spry invoices total $8,061. Uh, New Jersey Advanced Media, uh, $287.80, and that was for the public notice for the audit. And then um, we have uh, $40,093.20 from Alfred Benish and Company, which represents the first quarter of payments. Um, a late addition to the packet uh, that was a separate handout at your spot um, is this. Uh, we're not necessarily asking for approval today uh, since you just got it today. But um, these are actually, Charles, would you mind explaining what <laughs> these are? Certainly. Over the, uh, over the last year and certainly this year, given the trajectory the P3 project has had, and a number of elements for which the contract was deficient in explaining who would be handling this. Um, the past authorized representative of the GPA had directed Benish to do certain elements which are delineated in this packet, uh, whether it was attending the P3 meetings in Harrisburg or going to the, uh, the precast company to observe and check how precasts were being done. There were a number of things that they, Benish was brought into doing that would otherwise not have been covered in the contract. So there are extra hours that we've discussed over the last six months or so trying to mm. whittle down or best explain where those hours come from. And what you have in front of you now is a very clear, very almost exhaustive uh, explanation of the additional hours that Alfred Benish Company has put into this project above and beyond their scope of work for simple things, you know, simply taking Bridge 15 out of the project. That was an element that they were involved in, in dealing with the Bridge 124 um, issues and clarifications for adding a third lane. Uh, another element that uh, Benish was involved in, and certainly in the credit letter 
Um, they have played a very large part in both helping us find what the proper price would be, helping us uh, break out the bridges that we're looking to take out of the project as well as uh, meeting with and helping us negotiate with uh, Krieger to that extent. So there's been a lot of other things that are well outside the project um, contract and, and this reflects those. All right, so this is just re for review today, not approval? It, if you would feel comfortable taking action on it. I think I feel comfortable reviewing it. In detail. I mean, what's the total we're asking for? Eighty some grand. Uh, ninety-five thousand. Yeah, somewhere around there. I think that is. I, I see ninety-five thousand six hundred and eighty-eight and twenty-four cents. Yes. That's I feel more comfortable just reviewing that yet. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts on that? So uh, then we would respectfully request a motion to approve the invoices that were in um, that were in the packet for payment uh, totaling forty eight thousand four hundred and forty two dollars I'll make that motion All right. I'll second thank you Ron uh, I just want to make note of uh, King Spry though for their legal fees of eight thousand sixty one dollars five thousand six hundred eighty seven of that was for the p3 it was broken out, right? Okay. Remainder then was for our general fees, services. All right. Any other questions on that motion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And then the other one is just invoices paid to date, and that's just informational only. Correct. Is that correct, Mark? All right. Thank you. I think we're ready for the presentation. Now? We could do it now. All right, Asher. Ready for the KIZ presentation. Right. Back to this. Good morning, Asher. Good morning. How are you doing? I think we're okay now. It's Technology's good. up. I was say, everything looks, everyone here can see what's on the slide. So um, the copy in your packet does correspond. That's what I'm going to go through. Um, but I want to start off, I, I appreciate the opportunity to come and present today. The GPA has been a great partner uh, of the KIZ over the years. Um, so I'd love to see that partnership continue forward. I look forward to telling you about what we've been doing uh, recently and also that's all right, Mark. Give an overview of, of the program. Mm -hmm. And do I have a time limit? Well, should I keep it 10, 15? 10, 10 minutes would be great. 10 minutes, OK. <clears throat> um, so the KIZ was created in, in 2004 by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We were the first to be designated. Uh, there's now 28 KIZs across the state. Um, and it was designed in mind with the idea of creating it around educational institutions. So for us, um, we work closely with Lehigh Valley Colleges and Universities, mainly Lehigh University and Northampton Community College since they're on the south side. So the goal was create this geographical zone with these resources so that um, talent technologies being generated by the universities on campus can transfer off of campus into the community. So, you know, help, help them stay within the communities and not go elsewhere. Um, so the mission of the program is, is written there. It's, it's basically what I, what I just talked about, but it's really working with the local resources. It's not, we're not the be all end all towards economic development in terms of supporting startup companies, but you know, we like to think that we fill a, an important niche in that entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, so how do we help, how do we help these companies? Uh, we have a couple different programs. The first four bullet points are funded by partners such as the GPA, and then the last one is funded by the state. So I'm just going to run, run through them quickly. If you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me. But um, we have $15,000 technology transfer grants. So these are basically to help a, a company commercialize a product, service, or technology that they're developing. 
Um, these proposals come in front of our KIZ board. We actually have a meeting uh, today. So the GPA has had um, Paul Anthony and, uh, and Mark attend the meetings and be part of it. And so um, what I like about this is that the partners get to actively decide where the funding goes and, and what startup companies are worthy of these grants. Um, so again, the, these are the, the largest amount in terms of grants that we give out. Um, I do want to note that we made a, a small change in, in 2000, not a small change, but a, I would say pretty significant change in 2017 where companies that receive tax credits, which is a bottom bullet point that I'll get into, they actually have to repay that grant. Um, so there's a repayment provision in the grant where if a company uh, generates enough revenue where they're able to apply for tax credits, they actually have to pay that grant back, which signifies that the company is growing, that they have the ability to pay it back. Um, and I can get into that a little bit more if anyone has questions on it, uh, but we actually have our first company actually paying back one of the grants. So it's in an effort to make the program more sustainable so that we can invest more funding in, in companies. We have student internship grants. so. Um, if a company wants to hire a student from a Lehigh Valley College or University, um, they, can, they can do so. A lot of the companies are cash strapped, they're just starting up, they have a, an idea and a prototype for a product, but, but again, don't really have the funds to hire a team. So this allows them to add to their team while also you know, working with the, the local colleges and universities. Uh, we have two, two new programs, relatively new programs uh, that came about. So we have a partnership with Lehigh University where a team can, or a, a company can sponsor a team of about eight students to work with them for an entire year on a part of their company. So the sponsorship fee is $5,000. The KIZ has um, approved funding to match half of that. So the KIZ would fund it at $2,500 and the company would have to match it at $2,500. Uh, new partnership with Northampton Community College. So if any of you are familiar with their, with their uh, fabrication lab, down there at the Fowler Center, they have a prototyping facilities, 3D printers that's open to the public. So a lot of our companies are product-based, so they actually find, um, you know, whether they're prototyping new products or planning on, <laughs> on launching a new uh, product line or whatever it is, they're able to, to access the Fab Lab. So we have said we'll pay up to $1,000 per company to access the resources through that. And then we have our um, up to $100,000 in KIZ tax credits. So, uh, Companies can apply for this based on increased revenue. So if they increase their revenue from one year over another, they can apply to the state for these tax credits. Um, and the important part is they're sellable. So a lot of our startup companies don't have a large enough state tax liability to use the tax credit, so they can sell it on the open market for about 90 cents on the dollar. That cash gets reinfused back into their business and they can apply for that tax credit every single year until the company's eight years old. And then when we talk about startups, who are we talking about? Um, so it's companies located within our KIZ, which I have a map on the next slide. They're less than eight years old. They operate within one of our targeted industry clusters, and they're developing innovative products, which is often the differentiator between whether or not they're eligible for the program. Um, they have to be, have some kind of proprietary technology, some kind of trade secret. Um, and, and that's you know, one of the, the eligibility requirements for startup companies eligible for the program. Uh, these are the boundaries. Looks like you can see it pretty clearly, but I, I put a couple just reference points on there. Um, it pretty much includes all the south side, including, and I'm not sure, I forget if the GPA is involved in the LVIP flex manufacturing. No, no? okay. Um, but there's a 40,000 square foot flex manufacturing center for you know smaller startup companies out in LVIP that's being developed. So um, just to give you an idea of the, of the scale of the area, the geographic area that we're talking about. Investment, um, we've invested over $8 million in over 100 companies since 2004. So uh, most of that is done, the three columns to the right. So of that $8 million, most of it is tax credits. Again, since it is the largest value resource that, that we have, but um, a lot of it are the grants, the technology transfer grants that get invested in companies. Um, in your, in your packet, meeting packet. Okay. It is in there, but you it's can't okay. see it. But in the in the booklet, there's actually um, in one of the pages, there's a hopefully a readable. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I tried to look at it on the slides on the page, and it, it looks like yeah, you can't. 
You can't read it. We included a full page slide in their packets. Okay. Which is, you know, it's an ongoing joke about these screens and um, mm -hmm. signs and fonts. Yeah, I think I make a joke about this every year. We're gonna have a test on. We're gonna have a test on all the numbers later. So, mm. um, so the. Was, did you have any other questions on the? No, okay. I'm just okay, um, and then the partners of the program. So obviously we have the the state with the tax credits and the one who designated us, but we also have local organizations, banks, um, Lehigh and NCC, as as I mentioned, that fund the program annually. So those uh, technology transfer grants, student internship grants. Any resource that's not a CASI tax credit um, is funded through the partners. And all the funding of the partners goes towards those grants and um, you know some marketing that we do and, and that kind of stuff. And I'll, I'll show the budget that we have for 2019 as well. Do you have one question? Sure. Mind, you want me to wait till no, 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 no. I'd rather not. Um, you kept it um, south side specifically, or is there a reason not to consider including Moravian, or is it just a geography-based decision? S so it is, uh, that's a really good question. So we've got a, a lot of questions on that. Um, when it was designated, it was south side because of the proximity to Lehigh and the proximity to Northampton Community College. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't engage Moravian and some other colleges. Uh, they actually have an MBA program where they will um, work with they reach out to us every year, twice a year, <laughs> and ask for startup companies. And so we send them a lot of KIZ companies. Their students work with them on marketing, market research, that kind of stuff. So we do have partnerships, but if a student were to graduate from Moravian, they would have to locate in the south side. I see. And the state has been very wary of growing, growing the zones and adding <laughs> acreage and um, because they only have a pool of so many tax credits to give out per year. So. Mm -hmm. You know, if we are going to expand the zone or add any new area, which we can do, we have to subtract it from what we currently have. Thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, some recent updates. Uh, this is a company, medical device company, Kneecap Medical. I was a little freaked out when I first met the founder. We went out for coffee, <laughs> and he pulls his baby out of out of the bag, and I started looking around, seeing if anyone was dialing 911. Um, it was a little weird, but uh, basically, what he's doing is he has a, a a device for infants in the neonatal intensive care units um, because stress is very bad for them. So he has this basically device that filters out high frequency noise to the ear. Um, so it, free, it uh, filters that out from sensors, any kind of beeping, anything like that, anything that would induce stress while allowing low frequency to enter through the device. Um, so he's gone through clinical trials. He received a $15,000 tech grant from the KIZ board uh, in December of 2018. So he currently manufactures, assembles the products over on the south side. Uh, Gobley, so this is, you know, I would say the ideal story of the KIZ and what kind of companies we're looking to fund. Um, so Lehigh University graduate 2015 had this idea for a mix between a water balloon and a paintball. And she was developing it in her apartment. She applied to the KIZ for a $15,000 grant, got awarded, created a manufacturing facility on the south side, was making them by hand. Um, fast forward a couple years, Michaels and, and Walmart made a deal with her and she was selling them there. So multi-million dollar deal. Again, a student that graduated two years prior, um, she's one of the biggest advocates for the program as far as you know what that funding early on did for her company and, and put her in a position to, you know, approach these individuals and uh, commercialize her product. Uh, Bond Place Brewing, so to answer a future question, no, no grant funds have gone to a brewery, um, but they are eligible for the program because they're a manufacturer and they are doing, um, it's innovative manufacturing. Um, they don't have any patents, but they do have trade secrets. So. They've actually received tax credits from the state of Pennsylvania, over $100,000, which allowed them in part to purchase a second building where they can increase their manufacturing capability. Um, so again, a great story. We're sort of going outside of um, what the, I guess, typical company, medical device, life sciences, manufacture, or not manufacturing, but um, uh, software development, that kind of stuff. Um, there's a broader, broader industries that we can we can help to support. So, um, Impact, 
You can see it there as far as the jobs created, uh, additional funding leveraged through uh, third party grants, investment capital. Um, you can see the patents filed and new product introductions. And those reports come directly from the state. So every company that signed up for the CASI has to report on a semi annual basis. Uh, put another way, you can see that for every dollar invested by the KIZ, um, $9 in additional funding leveraged, uh, almost $9 in increased revenue, and about $6 in uh, research and development expenditures. Uh, it's always good to apply for awards and, and, and you know get your name out there to people that might not be familiar or are outside of the area and aren't familiar with the program. Uh, so we received a, a top award from the International Economic Development Council with uh, for 2018 for partnerships with educational institutions. Um, part of this, uh, in, the, in the packet here, there's an article on innovation in Bethlehem. So they reached out to us and asked us to do an article. So, um, you know, I'm excited because this gets our story out to maybe some companies that are either just starting up or people thinking about starting a business that might consider us, you know, it's, it's a small part of marketing and getting the name out there, but, but it's an important piece. Um, 2019, so what does our budget look like? Uh, you can see most of the funding of the $127,000 that we approved for 2019 go towards those technology transfer grants. Uh, as I mentioned, we have two being considered today. And so once we max out that funding, we're basically done until January 1 of next year, since that's when our fiscal year starts. Um, you can see we've, we've approved some student internship grants. Uh, the TE capstone program will start up in the fall, so um, we may be getting some approval there. And uh, NECAP Medical, the one company that I featured, um, has taken advantage of the Fab Lab so far. It continues uh, to work on their product there. And with that, uh, if anyone has any, any questions on anything in the packet or, or the presentation? Uh, sure, just uh, one question. I probably should know this. So, uh, uh, the KIC zone, is there any other in Northampton County? Is there one like in Easton? Or? There's not. That's I thought it's only yep. that one. Yep. Thank you. It, How long has the GPA been partnered with the KIZ? That's a really good question. I know at least since 2014. Okay. And so I it's think been a few years. prior, I, I think way before. I think it's close to too. 10 years. Um, I, 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 yeah, I think they, the GPA has been. Uh, for as long as I've been with the county, which is five, going on five years, we've been a partner, and it predated me for a long time. Uh, it's, it's impressive. I've had the opportunity to attend a few meetings Thank and you. see some presentations. And the talent that's in the area, it's, it's, it's obviously it's fantastic. So, you know, and I, you and I communicated this, and my question right. is, all, all the talent is organic here, you know, and grown here. and. You know, and, and the GPA funds that, and it's GPA county money, is local money. Mm -hmm. Does the funds for this stay local? Yeah. We encourage companies to keep it local. Um, and I, I know you're referring to the email and our communication mm -hmm. back and forth. Um, I know that we have a, a policy that's tough because if somebody needs uh, to pay for, you know, Amazon Web Services, you know, that goes to the West Coast. So it's not... It stays, you know, within the country, but not the Lehigh Valley. I mean, there's very few organizations that could provide those types of services. Right. And because we fund such a wide type of or wide range of expenses, it's tough to say, well, you can only use a Lehigh Valley. Now, if that's something the KIZ board wanted to do going forward, we could do that. But um, it would be very, it would definitely limit the scope of what we're able to fund. Okay. Uh, it's understandable. You know, your Amazon example, I, I get that. It's just, you know, anything else that we're using here, because you're using local labor, local talent, that's kind of what we're after. I, I, that's my, yeah, no, and we, that's my we, perspective, just keep it local. No, we, and we, we encourage companies to use local developers, use local manufacturers, and that's another portion that I'd like to get a better handle on is, you know, if somebody's looking to manufacture plastics. I know there's a company in Bridgeworks in Allentown um, that, does the work? I know it's not in Northampton County, but it's still it's still in the Lehigh Valley. But right. um, again, local manufacturers, um, software develop development. Obviously, we would love to see them use local developers. Um, but the board has taken, you know, ma made the decision, and we've been operating based off of um, 
you know, as long as it stays within the country, we'll okay. allow it to be funded. But yeah. Yeah. thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yes. So this was started. Wait, when in '04 did you say? Correct. And who actually initiated or designated it as um, the KIZ? Was it the county? Was it a state funded? It was the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the Department of Community and Economic Development, and the Bethlehem Economic Development is the local administrator. Right. So do they have a time limit, or once it's established, it's in perpetuity? Or is it, you know, because some of our tax-free zones are like 10-year caps, so. So as long as we have uh, continued to work with the partners and have our funding, that, that can extend as far as, you know, the partners see the value and and you know they're still engaged and and see the impact but but the state KIZ tax credits um, those will only exist as long as the state continues to offer it they had a pool of 25 million dollars that they dispersed to the companies different companies in the 28 KIZs um, they reduced that to 15 million about three years ago so if they keep reducing it or if they eliminate it completely then that aspect of it you know goes away and that's a really important part of the whole program so if that goes away you know we would need the, to reevaluate the program but um, I mean, we don't see it going away in the near future hopefully some additional background when this program was first created by the state um, there was more than just the tax credits there was some operational funding so they funded this program much more substantially and then over the years, they basically eliminated all of the operational support um, and basically just went to this tax credit model where the only thing that the state really provides now is the tax credits. Um, my understanding is that the Bethlehem KIZ is one of the few that really kind of kept their program going in offering these supplemental grants through funding partners where most of the other places they have their zone and if you qualify for the tax credits you can get that but that's essentially the only benefit that they offer as opposed to us where we're doing the tech transfer grants the internship grants um the fab lab stuff so you know we've really kind of stuck with the program and um tried to enhance it without the state support and my second question is the number of interns placed is, is growing less and less. Is that, again, based on what you're saying because the money coming into that program is less or on the back page of your yeah, that, prospectus? Um, so that that has no effect, the the state's funding on, on the internship, but is that? Yeah, well, I don't it seems like there's less and less every year. It seems like there was a, like in 09, there are 22. Now you're down to four. Yeah, um, uh, a lot of that was due to that state funding, since we had more funding to award. Um, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not out there saying, hey, you should apply for an internship. But, you know, it, it just sort of comes in as it comes in. Mm -hmm. um, so it hasn't been as used recently, the, uh, the student internship program. Um, we have approved three so far this year and have another one in queue to be reviewed. Um, and it, it just depends like some years it's higher some years it's lower but recently you're right it has I think in, in big part due to that hundred thousand dollars that we got per year from the state for funding is that an academic year or is it a, a student identifies a, a project and they can apply to you whenever or does well, it would it be the startup go? company applying and then they would go out and recruit a, a an intern mm -hmm. from one of the local colleges or universities Okay, thanks. Yep. Any other questions? Oh, thank yes. you, Asher. Okay, is, thank you. Is, is there a formal ask today? Uh, $40,000 for 2018. Or 2019. Wow. 2019. <laughs> wow, you missed that, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, oh, good, sorry. Good thing I, Mark was here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so typically, I'm, I'm assuming our funding has been 40000 the, uh, the past, uh, I want to say at least two years, we've provided a $40,000 grant. Mm -hmm. I am looking for a motion to provide the KIZ with $40,000 for the year 2019. I will make that motion. I will second. 
the motion as well. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ron. Any questions on that motion? Uh, seeing now, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, All right. Roger. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Ron, are you going to cover the draft budget proposal? Yes. Please. Thank you. You have a copy of the draft budget in front of you. Again, everybody's worked together on this. The, the format, from my perspective, I think reads, again, pretty well. We tried to show historical data, so you'll see the columns from 2014 through 2018 from the revenues and expenditures, so it gives us a pretty good trend analysis of what we've been uh, you know, receiving in revenues and what our expenditures have been, and we broke on, we broke them down based on a lot of the expenditures that are pretty consistent. And then when you go to the far right column, you'll see that we we projected uh, for draft purposes the 2019 budget, and total revenues were shown at two million seventy four thousand six fifty one, and you'll see uh, the breakout of what those are. And then with the expenditures, same thing. We looked at the historical data and tried to uh, put numbers that we think would be consistent on the, the budget for 2019. A couple of items on the expenditure side I just want to talk about. On a, the bottom, the final uh, column there, financial stabilization, we put in $500,000. That's really our reserve. So what, what 500000 is is about three years operating expenses. So as a target, you know, we threw that in just for discussion purposes, but that would keep, you know, about a three-year reserve for us. Uh, going forward. And then a couple columns up there, you'll see future grants and future loans. We don't have any historical data on that, but just to fill it in for this purpose today, uh, we put in $10,000 for grants and $25,000 for future loans. And part of the goal for this year would, would be is to you know, really talk about maybe a consistent policy of how we're going to go about offering grants or loans. And, and as we could do that through the year, then we'll we, we may have some better numbers, but we just thought put in something, even, it's a conservative number just to, to have the budget. So based on that, you'll see we're projecting total revenues at 2074651 and total expenditures at 2074651 and the reserves in place. And then on the far left column on the bottom there in, in yellow, you'll see we just showed what our fund balance was at the end of the year, the 1280051 So. I like the fact that it's uh, pretty straightforward. It, it really follows the income statement well for us and with historical data. A budget's just a, a budget. I mean, it's a projection, but it, uh, it gives us a timeline and some parameters to look at, and I think it's a good discipline to put in place for us. Can I ask a question? Sure. What's the difference between the contingency and financial stabilization? If the, uh, the financial stabilization is the reserve, yeah, the contingency is the rest of the money between, the, if you look at, I think, the million, now, uh, Mark, you can feel it, it's the, it, it's our million 280 less the 500,000, and then we're adding in, I think, that miscellaneous 285. So to me, that's essentially yeah. your plug number that could be programmed in future grants, future loans, or whatever else you would want to do with it. Um, but we wanted to differentiate between the financial stabilization, which is like money right. that w we're kind of suggesting you should not view that as discretionary money, like that's as sort of permanently to, reserved, right. as opposed yeah. to the contingency, you like as an example with the 40000 grant that you approved today. We would take money from the contingency and move it up to future grants to fund that. Right. Thank you for that. That's a good question. And then on the back, we didn't do the back yet, did we? Oh, okay. <laughs> that. Oh, that's um, Thank you. There's oh, that, that's just the capital. There. Yeah, that's the capital budget we broke out on. On same thing, you'll see the P3 historical revenue, uh, less our expenditures, and we just tried to show a timeline on what that would look like for 2019. So on the back side for the Benish request for additional compensation, where would that be plugged in at, Ron? Hmm. Engineering. 
Engineering. Is that where it would? All right. So, okay. And basically, I'm sorry. The P3 is actually just a pass through. Also. Right. Right. Okay. To me, on the general fund side of the budget, the big question is around future grants and future loans. And there, are, there isn't a formal, with uh, the return of the loan and development fund money and the return of the community investment partnership revolving loan fund, mm -hmm. the GPA doesn't have formal loan programs. And it doesn't have a what I'll call grant program. So there's no for, like there's no formal way to ask the GPA for funds other than what Asher just kind of did today. Mm -hmm. um, so the question: Do you guys want something more formalized? Do you want us to be advertising that there is funds available or like that that to me is the the question around future grant and how much would you want to program there? Well, one of the things maybe we I, I would suggest is I, I could, you know, as treasurer maybe have a, a working meeting to come up with some parameters like that and then we could present it at a future meeting for you. So I mean that that's a good thought, and we could come up with something. Uh, but I think that let's discuss it, and maybe in a future meeting we could. Put we can. Out. I mean, obviously, I think we should have some type of guidelines. Yeah. It, it, if there's no guidelines, it's just somebody coming in and doing their presentation, right? And then there's. Yeah. There's I'll advocate for guidelines. Yeah, we, we agree. I mean, we've had some preliminary discussions on it, and and you know, obviously, there's benefits to giving loans because they'll be repaid and then you get those monies to keep putting it out there versus just going with grants but but there are good circumstances we had one today with the KIZ zone when a grant really is appropriate but if it we is. come up with good guidelines we'll, we'll have good direction going forward all right so you'll be committed to working yeah on we'll that. get it we'll get a session we'll put something together thank and you for stepping up Ron. sure all right Anything else on that? Now, uh, are we looking to adopt this? I, I think so. The only change um, that I wish I would have thought of earlier, in the future grants, we're going to need to put $40,000 in there yeah. to be able to make the grant right. to the KIZ. Right. So, um, but this, this here is only a guide. It's a guide. It's a guideline. <laughs> right, Mr. Right. Solicitor? I'm going to look at just a guideline. Yeah, so not we're not rules. bound. Like right. It's guidelines. We're not bound to this. Okay. And I did check with the solicitor, somebody, or the solicitor, the accountant, somebody had a question that if we adopt a budget, um, would that hurt us in the audit if, you know, we didn't follow the budget sure. to a T? And she said, that's not a problem. Her thing was, it's better to have a guideline and what you expect to fund than mm -hmm. nothing. Right. So does it need to be done in two parts? Does it need to be a motion to accept the outline and then the fun, the amounts, or just one motion to accept the whole draft it as it exists? Yeah, just as one motion. Right, because if my understanding is if we need some loan money, we take the agency <coughs> and plug that into the future loans. Right, it's a living document. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Right. Motion. Do you want to make that motion? Sure. I'll second it. There you go. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Ken. Uh, motion is out there to yeah. accept the budget outline uh, guidelines for the GPA. Any questions on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Good work. Thank you. Yeah, nice job, Ron. It's much nicer than it was when we started. Just read Getting everything, there. can understand everything. Good morning, Greg. Let's see. Uh, oh, next item is the P3 bridge update. <laughs> morning, everybody. 
Good morning, Greg. Morning. Does everybody have a copy in their packet? Mm -hmm. I provided a spreadsheet as well, as was asked last time, to, so you can see all the purges. Okay, I'll go through some of the things, items that have changed since, uh, since last month. Uh, regarding uh, final construction plans, we have uh, we received 18, given conditional approval on those 18, and we're just waiting uh, for um, PADP approval for Bridge 119, so we can uh, finally review uh, that one as well. So the uh, construction plans have been uh, coming through, we've been uh, approving them as they've been coming in. <coughs> uh, right away, uh, we have signed documents in hand for 29 out of 30 parcels. And a verbal agreement was given for, for the last one. That's at Bridge 54. Uh, regarding utilities, we've been in constant communication with the utilities. PPL has started tree trimming uh, at Bridges 63 and 184. They hope to have them complete by the end of April with the pole relocations. Uh, Verizon has been staking out the sites, has completed tree trimming at Bridges 76 and 207. We're also still in coordination with MedEd and Frontier for some of the other bridges to get those utilities moved. Uh, regarding construction, uh, Bridge 143, construction began on February 8th and it, and it stopped on March 26th. They completed the two spans for the, it's a masonry arch rehabilitation that they do. Uh, due to the stream restriction, they cannot move the, uh, the barriers now until uh, June 15th. So they, uh, they've stopped construction on, on Bridge 143. Uh, on Bridge 63, construction began on April 13th and to, uh, to establish a coffer dam on the upstream side of the bridge. A uh, storm event occurred on the weekend of April 19th, damaging the coffer dam system. And uh, uh, as was noted during a field visit that I attended on April 24th, uh, sandbags were uh, visible downstream of the bridge. Uh, due to the damage from the storms and due to the rain over the weekend, we've been told that they are still uh, not working out at the site due to the high water events. Uh, due on punch list items, uh, Bridge 227, I offered final acceptance on April 26th. There are still uh, punch list items remaining on Bridges 189, 191, and 66, <coughs> and those punch list items have to do with paving. Uh, bridge 66, there's a utility in the Soccer Town Borough parking lot, which once the utility is removed, Krieger will be able to pave the parking lot for them. And bridges 189 and 191, there's some paving that needs to be done in between the bridges uh, at the discretion of the township due to some damage occurred from construction equipment. Uh, regarding the upcoming schedule that we've been given at our status meetings, uh, bridge 143, as I noted before, will be starting back on June 15th. Uh, bridge 63 will be starting back once the waters recede. And Bridge 184 will be starting once the stream restriction has been lifted. As of right now, they are the only three bridges scheduled for, for this year. Uh, regarding the credit letter, a response letter was sent to Krieger on March 5th. In response to their letter from February 4th, they replied back on April 16th, and it's currently under review by the county and the GPA. So that's, that's my update for this month. Oh, uh, one last thing. Um, Krieger has named uh, Bill Granz as their new project manager. He attended the, uh, the last two status meetings, one face-to-face -face and one on the phone. What's the name again, sorry? Uh, Bill Granza, G-R-A-N-Z-A. Uh, see if you have any questions. Uh, Greg, on the milestone payment, we have a payment due this the end of this month. Mm -hmm. And the uh, payment for four additional bridges built, final designs. Will it be close to that? The uh, final designs have been completed, the bridges, no. To, to that extent, we had uh, extensive conversations about the uh, circumstances before which we were in to complete these bridges. The bridges 184 and 63 had the arches and precasts already made, so those were part of last year's bridges, and those components have been sitting in the yard since last year. Uh, the original plan this year was for 11 bridges to be constructed. Is that for the milestone? No, for the milestone there were four, and uh, I don't believe 184 was one okay. of the milestone bridges. It would be. Um, 
No, no from their, their original plan, oh, the original uh, plan no. Bridge 184 was expected to be done in June. That's correct. <clears throat> their milestone bridges, as they had presented at the beginning of the year, were bridges 143, 63, 215, and Bridge 54. Um, Bridge 54 is the most complex bridge that they had in the schedule, and some, for some reason or other, they front-loaded that bridge, and we've had many discussions about that, uh, simply because Bridge 119, which we do not have a permit for yet, um, would have been the easiest and the most um, expeditious bridge to do. It, it doesn't have utilities and that would have to be relocated or any of the usual issues that we run into. Mm -hmm. And for getting the easements, that would have been a target to have worked on right from the, from the onset. Um, that's not being addressed at this point and, and for no reason anyone can understand. Um, 215 is a simple box culvert. It's a small span uh, bridge. At its best circumstance, it is more than eight weeks away from being able to be addressed because they have not um, contracted with anyone to make that box culvert. Hmm. And every one of the additional bridges or any other bridges would be more than eight weeks away because of the simple lead time for precasting of these items. And none of that is, is necessarily in place. And from an email we received from them after our last status meeting, they had indicated that they were they had no intention of moving forward on any of the other bridges to the extent of where we would be to get any bridges complete. Uh, March 30, uh, May 31 is the, uh, the timeline for the next payment, but there is no way in heaven that this could be, we can get four bridges done at that time. They don't have enough of the components together and they're not planning on. They have proposed in their response to us a new bridge schedule that rather than doing 11 bridges this year, 10 bridges next year, and so on, uh, that they would just do four bridges this year, four bridges next year, I think three bridges, then four bridges, then four bridges, bringing the, bringing the schedule well out into uh, 2024, 2023. The rationale for that being? We don't necessarily have a rationale uh, from that, and we are we are going through the. There were two different documents that were sent over. One was 29 pages that will take some um, responding to, and the other was um, their new proposal for a um, contract amendment. So. Uh, which goes well off from where we were initially. Can I ask you to double back and say one th You said a lot, and then in the beginning you said there were four bridges that were originally proposed. <laughs> Could you say what those bridges were? Those, those bridges were uh, Bridge 143. That's in Moore Township. That's the bridge that they started working on. That's in process. Right. They, they, mm -hmm. And to that extent, they only did the two uh, arch linings there. There other work that bridge decking wasn't done. Correct. The other elements of it were not done. They only worked on the arch linings there. Um, bridge 63, which is in the Bushkill um, Creek, it's right by Tatami. It's actually by all the townships, and that was that was a point of contention we had in the very onset. The Krieger did not attend the pre-construction meeting, and the pre-con meeting there was probably more important than most because that touches three different municipalities within the confines of that, nor was at that time Krieger attending or sending representatives to the um, status meetings, and I believe they missed three status meetings mm -hmm. in total before Bill Granza was named. Uh, to that extent, in, the last, in this year alone, effectively, we've had three different project managers uh, representing Krieger for this project. The, um, that bridge, as, as many or anyone who passes the Bushkill, the Bushkill is a, an active stream. It, it gets water and not a big surprise in April, it rains. Um, to, to that extent, and I just have to ask, the, we have other bridges and I know that you work on other bridges. 
Did anyone else um, completely lose a coffer dam this year that you're aware of? Not to that extent, no. And when you said that you saw evidence of sandbags south of the bridge, just for their edification, how far south of the bridge were some of these sandbags found? A few hundred feet, I would say. Sorry, which bridge was that? Also, I'm sorry, I didn't follow it. Which that's bridge, bridge 63. 63. 63. I, I mean, it's, if you look, if you look downstream from the bridge, I mean, you can see it as far, far down as you as you look. I mean, it could be upwards of a thousand feet downstream. Yeah. All right. So you got. And then, the, as, then we have the Raisley Hill Road Bridge, which is adjacent to but not it's it goes over little creek which is one of the bridges that we were never discussing because it is a a bridge that needs repair but what number is that bridge 215 that's on raisley hill in lower mount bethel and then the other bridge was bridge 254 in, in flicksville so this is and to that extent just to provide the the same sinking sensation that I have um, also bridge 188 on in Lehigh Township was anticipated to be starting to have been started in April notwithstanding that the anticipation would have been also to do bridges 224 and 119 beginning in May and there's not only no evidence that that's going to happen we've actually have a, an email from them saying they have no intention of doing so can't ask the question. So basically, there were at least eight bridges. That I had 184 in there too, only because yeah, there's, had that there's in 11 there bridges. Letter. There were 11 bridges planned for this, this year, year. because they and they're missed. downgrading it to four. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Last year there were nine bridges, which we only got six of. So three of those bridges were pushed into this year, and then bridges that we were anticipating or requesting a credit for to remove from the project they infilled this year's bridges with last year's missed bridges i have to ask why <laughs> like what's the rationale for saying no we're only doing four that's that's a good question okay <laughs> yeah i had to ask <laughs> it's a public meeting it's all right in private meetings we really don't have much more of an answer so oh, well it doesn't make sense there's a contract right But I mean, I understand water. I understand rain. I get it. But you would but also. Other than that. Uh, but you would also imagine that people in the business of building bridges have dealt with water and rain before. As you know, living in the Lehigh Valley, it's rained every year I've been here. Any other questions for Greg? Appreciate everything you're doing, Greg. Thanks. Yes, sir. Uh, yep, no we surely do. And just for your your request for the uh, additional oh, I, I compensation. Do. I'm sorry, I do have one more because he did this beautiful chart on the back for me, which <laughs> the I had bridge asked chart. for and I love. So under the status, there's nothing that says completed fully, correct? Oh no, yes. Uh, yeah, there are. Maintenance period four. Those yes. are the completed correct. funds. Correct. Maintenance period is correct. Okay. That's and that's easy. ten years. Yes. And the issue with that is if they want to push the schedule out. You know, I hear 2023. That, that would push the 10 years. Well, correct. push the 10 years maintenance out on that. That's correct, yes. Okay. And to that extent, um, and although we do need to address this in the future with a, an MOU or some memo of, the county is now independently through the GPA. The GPA, we own the bridges as the GPA. So we are presently insuring those bridges separately from what the county otherwise insures their bridges. Pushing the schedule out just pushes out how much longer we have to carry right. insurance on this. Now that is a cost that the uh, the county is bearing and something that we're working on getting set up. But to that extent, I believe our projections, if this were to only last 10 years, added another million and change to the project. How much more change that winds up being depends on how much longer it both takes us to be able to accept the bridge because we don't start the clock on the 10 years. Um, you know, at the very best right now, we are, we are looking at 13 years of insuring these bridges. 
and there's no way that we do this at this point the way the contract exists and the schedule that we're getting these bridges we're going to be spending about 16 years or coming closer to two million dollars um, for the GPA to insure these bridges while we're, they're in our ownership and that insurance is just for liability not for replacement of the bridge and whose great idea was this in the beginning well the councils this 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 hey, council president not me <laughs> this this has this is one of those things where Ben Franklin would say that success mm -hmm. has many fathers but failure is an orphan but in this particular case there are at least four people that we can directly tie to having put this together in this way mm -hmm. and and having missed it and unfortunately I would suggest that four of them were members of the GPA. Or three of them were members of the GPA. The other one was just the guy who appointed people to the GPA. I, I might add that um, last <coughs> month I've, I've had meetings with the um, brokers who put this together. And the question of whether or not to ensure the bridges for property damage. That was uh, apparently a point of uh, serious contention. <coughs> the decision was not made not to do it uh, for whatever reason. I was also told that um, the underwriting on it was extremely difficult. Nobody knows exactly what the bridge is worth. Um, but um, I will say that the insurance professionals were also scratching their heads since that is the seem to be the primary reason why we should have insurance on the bridge, but we don't have insurance on the bridge. To that extent, though, the county does not insure bridges for bridge replacement, and uh, by and large, we have a program for repairing guardrails um, or, or whatnot, and then when we do have a bridge washout or there is a sub substantial event, we usually look to uh, Pima for for help on those things or we we deal with it but ultimately when we're looking at we presently own 32 bridges to ensure those for 10 years at a cost of two million dollars we can afford to replace one um, for that because that's just for liability the other insurance would bring us probably upwards of another four million dollars uh, yeah I didn't think it was that much but it would be at least double. right well it would at least double the premium Anything else for Greg? Mark, please put uh, Benish's request letter on the agenda for next meeting. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Thanks a lot. Thank you. There's so much to say. I mean, I don't say it. I mean, I guess, it, you know, what? It's, it just listening to the report we heard this morning and what it seems like we're here to do versus this, it, it, this was not the original intention of the GPA, correct? No, the original to be intention managing is to help, bridge <clears throat> projects. Just help KIZ out. I'm assuming that was the original intention of the GPA. You know, things like that. Do conduit debt financing for hospitals and colleges and right. business. Right. Overview bonds, bond issuances. Bonds. How do we how do we fix this and get back to that? I guess is my big question for the future. We own bridges. Yeah. County conveyed them to us from council to the GPA to allow this to happen and circumvent the problem of building bridges on our own as a county. As a GPA. As a GPA. County's, yes. county's actually doing a bridge right now that's uh, months ahead of schedule. I'm sure it, it is. And, and yeah. you know, there is an element for which I believe that uh, Mr. Mealy likes to taunt me with that, so. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> So on the conveying of the bridges, do we convey them back as a group or complete? I think or after per the 10-year maintenance thing, they get conveyed back one by one to the county as they come off it. But it should have been like 10 bridges a year. At a time. At a sure. time. If they would have followed the schedule that I knew they wouldn't be able to follow from the day I saw the contract and everything, right. and I voted no for it. Right. Yep. So it was, it, you said it you was voted supposed to no be 10 bridges basket. a year, right? Pardon me? It was originally supposed to be 10 bridges a it year. It was something of that nature, Very yeah. 10, 8, whatever, depending on the, on, the, on, the, on the type of bridges, but then 
as we all found out, they picked bridges that really didn't need to be replaced to make it, you know, like, you know, so. And that's my last question. On the bottom of this, it says the bridges that are removed. Are they actually officially removed or are only a Nothing, few of those? We're, that's still in discussion. Point that's of not negotiation. Not official. 15's out, though. Yeah, 15's definitely out. Yeah, 15, 15 has been agreed upon. It's just not been put through on the contract. But there are letters of agreement between the GPA, the uh, Krieger, and the county has already accepted that bridge. And bridge 15 is now in Mr. Mealy's hand and is on the tip. So that is moving forward. And wasn't there one other one that was uh, was taken out or agreed upon? Or there were some changes? We have to we have letters of agreement, um, and we've uh, accepted their letter from Krieger on bridge 124. Uh, which is the Willow Willowbrook Road bridge in Allen Township. Right, because of the changes to the contract, right? Well, they're paying I for the extra late. Thanks. All right, next item on Service the agenda the is the, well, actually the correspondence. Oh, we got the bridge that, project correspondence from Lower Mount Bethel Township. That's information no for you. No action needed on that? No. Okay. So that was including everybody's packet. Yep. Next item is the service agreement that has been redlined. There were a lot of things that initially the intent of this was to keep the county completely out of the project and for this to be an element for which the GPA was contracting Krieger or serving as the conduit for Krieger and whether it was for whatever purpose it was done let's just say um, Mr. Mealy spends an awful lot of time dealing with this project whether it's dealing with the elements of relocations um, Mr. Barron's staff has been helping us dramatically with uh, obtaining the easements. I, I think last year during a series of, of discussions, just to put a price on it, we were told by um, Krieger and company that it would take them about a year for one person to run around and obtain all the easements for a bridge uh, project for, for that ensuing year. And uh, Mr. Amelie and, and Mr. Uh, Barron's staff have been able to knock that out in, in, in less than two months. Uh, from when they were given the information, they were able to, Mr. Amelie in, even going so far as to, for some of the holdouts or people we couldn't get in touch with, um, dispatching the deputies to stop by and, and help people uh, get the information that we, we needed. So... And to that extent, also, our the county solicitor's office was um, kind of written out of a lot of this contract. So this would be between us and the county to allow for better participation, basically codifying what we're doing now, uh, whether it's taking care of the easements, dealing with utility companies, dealing with legal issues. Um, Mr. Corriere and uh, Mrs. Rudis have been really very helpful in a lot of elements that I don't know that the county solicitor's office had ever intended to be involved in so uh, and you know to that extent last year caught before it became an issue several uh, farmland preservation easements and you can't have an easement on an easement so a lot of that needed to be vacated and dealt with in in short order so these changes would be uh, just to make it clear as to what is being done and make it part of the contract. Uh, I served as uh, just basically the shrivener on this, which is legal jargon for the person who just writes, writes up a document. Um, and um, yeah, we um, inserted uh, uh, these um, provisions, these amendments that were previously negotiated. However, looking at this over, I noted that we probably should add a, um, an additional preparatory clause reflecting the fact that this is, has been amended. So I recommend that <coughs> if, the, um, if the authority wants to move this today, that they move the amendments, the subject to uh, non-material language uh, revisions by the solicitor. I want to put in a, 
whereas indicating the, you know, uh, the date of um, amendments and so forth, because I know that we don't have it in here, and the full history of this is, is in here. So I wouldn't see any reason to delay it other than that. This would then go to council. I suppose what I should do is uh, shoot this to the county solicitor's office to make sure that they're comfortable with how this is set up. I get to say. Correction right. today, or? Do I have to say that, or just going just do that? A little bit of time. Okay. On so, I'm so page, I think it's 26. Like, or maybe it's 26. I'm not sure. Sean Langan's name is still. That's not red the, line. That is one of the non-material revisions. That oh, is that <laughs> exactly what you're talking? See, I'm caught that. No, <laughs> well, everybody else's name was red lined. Uh, John, and if you could point me to it, if it's in here, one of the things that we talked about that kind of dovetails with the RFP for insurance, and you just mentioned previously was the fact that we are not going to maintain um, property casualty insurance on these bridges and that the county is essentially agreeing in the event that it right. does get struck by a truck, the county will be responsible for those repairs and not the GPA. Is that spelled out in here somewhere? No, I don't think any element of that's addressed, but we are hopeful. Um, and I've spoken to um, Mr. Amelia about this. Um, we're hopeful that no trucks drive down Bush Kill Stream, so in the future, no one should be hitting the bridge. Well, we, 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 could, mm. we could add a line to that. But, but, but See, it's, it's satisfactory to the uh, county. Do you, do you think that should be added to this agreement? Because it, yeah, it, it, it can be. Okay. Surely. I think just to be clear on that. Yes, yeah, we did talk about that, Mark, and um, yeah, that, I don't think that would be harmful. I put that in there. And um, I could, we could get an agreement with the county on what the language should be. It should be very simple. My question is how does this, um, I mean, I see it, it addresses responsibilities, but how does it address finances? Well, finances as in. Uh, you know, like if the county, if we repress payment, or do we have to pay people for their participation? Are we expected to give extra money to the county for services that county employees are providing, or it's just that's in here? That's the whole rest of this. This is just our agreement with the county. I actually have a question on uh, paying the bills. I'm looking at section 13, source of payments. 13, I'm going to say it's probably D. <coughs> it's redlined in there that GPA should not be obligated to expend any of its own funds. And it's redlined under there, you know, if the GPA requests payment from the county for financial, legal, or other services, it must be written approval. So I'm just kind of curious on, on the normal legal bills that the solicitor has for the P3. What page are you on? Um, I don't know. Uh, page, uh, would be it one, would be page 105 of 104. Or 16. Maybe 16. So just, just the payment for the solicitor, does that go to the county uh, first? Well, there. Goes, but you know what, after I send it to the authority, then you don't have to describe uh, what happens to it next. But, uh, so our process when we get a bill um, is we review it and um, make sure that uh, any charges that are P3 related get classified as such. Mm -hmm. And then if there are charges that are non-P3 related, um, they go into the general. Um, and then right. the P3 related charges we send over to engineering and Charles to kind of sign off since they're involved in the day-to-day -day of that to say you know are these okay charges yeah I, I think given the history of this board 
previous to us who decided to see if a P3 would apply to a prison and went all around the state to try to sell P3 projects. That's what this is trying to alleviate. Some our board becoming rogue and spending money on solicitors in the tune of several hundred thousand dollars without any oversight from anybody. I think that's what this, this fixes. So in the future, when we're not here, and there are other people who are stewards of this, they can't do what happened before. I think that's what this paragraph fixes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and, and to that extent, there are, it, like it, it, to that extent, there are some of the Benish bills in what we are going to be um, taking up next month that address things that are specific to the GPA directing for P3 related items. So mm -hmm. if we were as a authority to ask them ask Benish to do something specific that's not on the, that shouldn't be on the county's time so that's what we're directing them to do if we're if we're causing a problem that's not necessarily a county related that's p3 expense that's an us related p3 expense so this is basically the Conrad O'Brien <laughs> do, we, do we put a clause in for that I think we should put a name, in. That's what we should name. just name it just name, name it, it. Instead of being D now, it will just be uh, CO? Yes. Yeah. Conrad O'Brien. Yeah, but that, that, that's, that's what that's for. In the history of this, this board and what was going on that we had to work, deal with, try to deal with. So all those references to the county executive must sign off would be the preemptive to that happening Right, again. I can't hire some crazy lawyer to sell this all over the state again. <clears throat> right, so but they, they look at this real closely too because it asks us to move a number of things back and forth, and we apologize for that. But sometimes it's unclear to our department which which is to which. But yeah, they're 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 very um, very careful about identifying the P three items. Kind of have to be. John, you're going to take this to the county solicitor. Yes. Is that the plan? Okay. And it'll be on the agenda for next meeting. No, okay. Yeah, get on the move now. Yeah, we'll fix it up. Why well, don't? And why were the lights not? taken under? Well, I can't. Do we need 12? Page 12 page 12. The maintain repair roadway lighting approaching and departing. Why were the lights taken out? Well, the, after, yeah. After but they all, yeah, council only take it up after we approve. So. Right. Retained um, maintenance section 10. What page you want, Mark? 12 or 70 something of 104, 71 of 104. Oh, maintaining repair roadway lighting, approaching and departing the bridge structure. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's Charles' question. Yeah, there's, that's not a thing that the county or the, um, the county or the GPA is involved in, so. Ever, right. Yeah, we don't have lights. So that was just to be removed. Okay. To clear it up so that we're not getting involved in those items. Well, we don't have lighting. We don't own lighting. So, scratch it out. Any other questions on this? I believe if the um, if staff and the solicitor can make the clarifications that we discussed here, um, this should be. I would make the motion to move this forward. All right, thank you, Charles. Is there a second? I would second that motion. Thank you, Ken. Any other questions? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Resolution 2019-06, request of former solicitor to release documents to the County of Northampton. Charles, you want to handle this one, or Mark? It's, so it's my understanding the county has been trying to obtain some documents um, related to billings that the county reimbursed the GPA <laughs> for. Um, and uh, so the the information that was requested from Norris McLaughlin is attached um, to the resolution, mm -hmm. and um, 
the Norris basically came back and said we can't release information to the county because we didn't work for the county we worked for the general purpose authority and they also raised some concerns about attorney client privilege and so this basically uh, the the resolution waives the GPA's attorney client privilege with Norris McLaughlin as it relates to the requested items in the letter from the county. Got it. I was going to say, Mr. President, that whereas this resolution is, is, is innocuous, it's totally unnecessary. These documents are public documents. And right. It's a silly request. It's it's, do you need a motion? So we're doing this because they refuse to give you information about stuff that's a public document because they're saying it's attorney-client privilege. Goes right along with their copyright. Happily make a motion to have them yeah. release, release Enth public documents to the public. To have this I'll second sign. that. Enthusiastically. All right. Who would imagine there would be so much enthusiasm for Norris McLaughlin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this board. All right. We have a motion and a second for this resolution. Uh, any questions on that? The question that why we have to even do that, but yes, moving on. I, we all agree on that. <laughs> all right, hearing no, que hearing no further questions, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. See, now I'm mad. And <laughs> oh, man. we'll send a letter to Norris requesting these documents now. And they will probably charge us. No, just waiving, fee. just waiving the rights. We're not requesting anything. We're just sending them the letter waiving our attorney yes. client privilege. Right. Okay. The, 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 the county has made a request, yep. which I believe is part appended to this. Yeah, the resolution yep. probably should go to the county. Okay. To, well, to the we'll, county and to, and to uh, Norris we'll, because. Oh, because they're, you know, whatever. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right, number nine, executive session. It's now 940. We're going to go into an executive session. Uh, what's the purpose of the executive session? Pending we'll litigation. Before or after. Potential litigation. Potential Thank litigation. You. Do I need any paperwork in there? No. I'll no. bring it to the office. Or is there coffee back here on cups and stuff? Like that? John, is Greg going with us? Or? Um, I don't know. I think he'd be helpful, but uh, it's up to you. You're the yeah, I would Greg, say, would you please join us? Do you want Mike? Sure. Or Neely? Oh, sure, of course, Mike. Okay. Sorry, I didn't realize you guys were a pair. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, no. We work together.
Yeah, just have her initiate that email. Or yeah, and we won't be playing this grand because Mary Alice is on a booster, right. so it won't be the next week anyway. So yeah, just have her send me an email that the board okay. approved. You know that grant, and then we'll remove sufficient funding to cover the grant. And then what? What's, what's their official name? Because I got up to see if there's a line item selected.
Yes, sir. We already said with the exam session before. Keep that at all. Uh, I know you'll have to just, you have to say it once. Okay. And we said it for 10 What's that? Do we have one thing to uh, on the agenda? Yes. I, I think the only other thing that we have is the insurance RFP. That's it. Yeah. yeah two hour meeting. We've got to get this in here somehow. We are. We're going to we're going to do that next. I think, right? Yeah. Or should we do that? Be new business, one. or you can, you can do that in new business. We'll, we'll do that in new business. Twelve point one. All right, it's now 10:15. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting back to order. All right, the next item on the budget, or sorry, the agenda is the insurance RFP. In your meeting packet is uh, a, what I'm calling a final draft of the insurance RFP. I worked with uh, Solicitor Freund to prepare this and the county procurement office. Um, the only thing that will change in this draft are finalizing dates for when it's advertised um, to be selected. We're proposing that uh, it'll be about 30 days that it's out there to collect responses. Mm -hmm. um, so toward the end of June, we um, I'm proposing that we would convene a committee of the willing uh, for to review the proposal, uh, the proposals, and make a recommendation to the general purpose authority. Hopefully, in at the July meeting um, or August, if we don't have a July meeting. Yeah, yeah we have a July meeting scheduled. Um, that we'd make a recommendation on who to select, and we can decide if we need. The committee would decide if we need interviews or. Um, and that so um, if there are any questions on the RFP I'd be happy to try to answer them no questions I think we're, I think we're good, uh, yeah, well, good. Uh, do we need a motion for that yes. we, to, we did to, to, approve, yeah. so to approve the, the RFP, RFP so going out we're so moved. Right approve and release the RFP uh, so do I second that motion that Lori just made? Thank you, Lori, for making that motion to approve and release the RFP for the insurance. Any other questions on that? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is the final GPA audit. Uh, just for your information, the audit was sent out and advertised. Uh, we included an electronic copy mm -hmm. in your packets. Right. Um, but uh, I did not include a printed copy. I thought I'd save a couple trees. Yeah, please. Thanks. Um, so if anybody needs a copy, we maintain one in our office and it's posted on the GPA webpage uh, within the county. Okay. Uh, new business. Under new business, uh, we have an agreement in front of us. For Watt Teeter, a uh, attorney, to uh, give us some guidance and um, some input on the P3 project. Uh, everybody's had a chance to look at that. We're going to engage them uh, effective today. Right, John. Yep, for a consultation on the P3 that are construction attorneys. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, get on this right away and 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 engage this attorney to find. All right. To go through that. Thank you, Ken. I need a second. I'll second. Thank you, Ron. Any questions on that motion at all? All right. Seeing none, motion. <laughs> sorry. Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Any other new business? No. No staff report. 
Yep. Thank you, Mark. All right, the next meeting is uh, June 4th. Be in this chambers here at 8.15 in the morning. Uh, motion to adjourn. Hold, 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 oh, sorry. hold before we adjourn. No. The milestone, the milestone will be taken up at a special meeting. Do we need to set that date here, or we don't want to do that yet? We don't know when it is. We don't. It's a moving target. All right, we want to wait. We'll advertise for it um, when we – we don't know if we need the meeting or – Yes, we will definitely need the meeting. All right. We'll wait clear. on that. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Lori. Second. Second. Thank you, Ron. All the favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Two hours. All right. Yeah, yeah.